Uh, Mr. Samples, I understand you caught a big bass on Lake Lanier. Well, he was a pretty good size. To me. How big was he? 22 pounds and 9 ounces. 22 pounds and 9 ounces. Well, the world's record, of course, is 22 pounds and 4 ounces. I believe you'd have one five, 5 ounces over that. Well, uh, I thought he's 25 pounds something. I mean, I took the fish home, brought him home, and cleaned him, need him. I didn't, I didn't know that, uh, well, I never thought about being nothing like that. I mean, I didn't think I had no record. I know that I had a record, but I didn't think I did on the fish. Did you measure him? Yeah, 32 inches long. Where'd you weigh him at? Well, I don't know. I was drunk. We weighed him summers, and they didn't nobody dispute the word. For they, everybody asked how much he'd weigh, and I'd just tell them how much he was for to weigh him again. I showed him all over the county. I reckon I did. I think I did. Many people saw the fish then. Uh, they, yeah, there's plenty of people seen the fish. What'd you catch him on? A little bitty spring lizard. A little bitty white-bellied spring lizard. What kind of tackle was you using? Using a Zebby Co. 33 with, I think, a 12-pound test line. It's 8 or 12, and I'm not sure which. But uh, he didn't put up much fight as a 2-pounder would. He just... After he come up and stood on that tail and chuck that head about three or four times, he just turned over on his side and just drug him right on in. He jumped? He jumped once then, you say? One time, yeah. That's all. Where, what area of the lake was you fishing in? I was fishing about a mile below Ball Ridge Marina. Out about the... a mile down the lake below Ball Ridge on the Smurred Island. Uh-huh, out in the big part of the lake, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what, uh, what made you cast over there on that Smurred Island, anyway? Well, I dropped Anchor Rock there on the island, and I pitched my little outfit, that little 33 out, and I had some heavy equipment there in the boat, had a big 55, and uh, I was going to put Big Lizard on them and get ready for Big Bass, and I just got one hooked, and I looked over there and seen my line stretching out straightened out, you know, see it stretching out. I reached down and caught him. When I jerked him, I thinks I'm hung for it didn't go nowhere when I jerked. This, that's about it. I mean, he come up there, stood on that tail and that about wound it up. Well, uh, how come you uh, didn't take him up to the Marine and get him weighed right away? Well, I didn't, I didn't, didn't think nothing about it. I mean, I was fishing for something to eat. You know what the world's record bass was? No. You haven't had any idea? I thought it's 25 pounds something or other. That's how come I didn't. I could have, I mean, if, if I'd known that that was it, well, I might have weighed him or something or other, you know, somewhere. No, we did weigh him, but I don't know where. I thought weighed him down at Joe Hansard, but... Grace said, Darrell said, he didn't weigh him down there, so I don't guess we weighed him down there. Well, how did the fish eat? Good. How often did you have him? More than one meal? Three messes. Three messes. What, supper and breakfast? And... Supper, dinner, and breakfast. Supper, breakfast, and dinner. Put it like that, that's the way we eat him. Well, if you catch another big fish like that, weighs over 22 pounds, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to have my picture took every time I can get to a Kodak and frame him. I didn't know the, I didn't know how to record. Jenna, you you like to fish a lot, don't you? Well, I've let uh, work has hindered my fishing last two years. It never done it before then, but it has for the last two years, but it ain't gonna hinder it so much from now on, for I'm gonna do a bunch of fishing. Uh, what's the biggest bass you caught before this? Uh, I'm not certain. I think 12 pound, four ounces. You do a lot of hunting? Yeah. You do any good? Mm, I got me a 12 point buck last year. That was down at Cedar Creek? Mm-mm. Got him at Greensboro. 
Uh, on the pulpwood land. What kind of business you in, Mr. Sam? Carpenting, driving nails. You'd rather be fishing? Lots rather. Well, Junior, did you ever find out what kind of fish that was you caught up there in the lake? Yeah, found out what they said it was, a red drooper. Red grouper, you mean that wasn't a bass at all? Well, I didn't get him out of the lake. I got his head out back to pick up truck. My brother, he come over to the racetrack, and I was over there, and I drunk about a quart, and had about a quart in the car. And he told me, said, look here what I caught. And I looked over in the truck, and there lay the biggest bass-looking head I ever seen. I'd had enough to where I couldn't exactly have told. I never seen a darn grouper. I didn't know where it was a drooper. Bass, you know, bass head could change after he got that big. My size is generally about eight or ten pound at the very biggest, or maybe twelve. But my boy caught one weigh twelve pound. I, you know, I didn't know what a twenty-two pound bass head would look like, so it looked like a bass head to me. And I pick him up, looking at him. And somebody walk up. He had a tag in his mouth, said twenty-two pound nine ounces. So I just pulled a tag out of his mouth. And <laughs> Pulled the tag out of his mouth and asked me how much he weighed and told him, said, where'd you catch him? I said, down on Lake Lanier. I just, uh, you know, I was expecting my brother any minute to speak up and say he caught it. He never did say a word, just stood there. Well, here comes some more looking at him, and I hand him to my boy, and he take him over to the stand where they announce her, and the announcer, he called it out said he sure was a big head. The next morning, the radio man, he called it out over the radio, and here come a game fish man up there. And, well, the rest of the story about it, you know. He wanted to say, come up there a story about the big fish, and I'd been got me two pints whiskey, and I drank one of them, and so I Told my boy in the house, I didn't look like he's gonna leave, so I told my boy, uh, went in there and took me another big drink, told him, come, come out of the store, so that's what I was gonna tell him. <laughs> well, Junior, it's your pleasure to see you. Let me ask you this, you do any hunting down there in Cummins, Georgia? Yeah, do a bunch of hunting. Yeah, you, what kind of dogs you have? I got a good dog down there. Used to have a sure enough good a possum dog. Did you catch many possums? With oh, him? I caught, I've been with him. Funny thing happened, I went with him one time. Caught a bunch of possums. I had about 17 in the sack. I told him, I said, we got enough possums around now. Come on, let's go home. He said, bow wow. So I lit out, I thought he's coming on, you know, and I got to the house and I took him out of the sack, had all I could tote. I pitched him under old pot I had there, a big old kettle of a thing. Uh -huh. The little boy, he raised it up and I was pitching him under it. Got the license under it, I heard him say, bow wow again, I looked and there he come a driving to and he just drove him right on under. We let the pot down. What happened to that old dog, Junior? Well, he got better every year. Next year we went hunting with him. Oh, I caught lots of them with him. Next year went hunting with him. Cut a tree down on him. Crippled him. We had a few possums, five or six. I sent J.W. back to town. He got the wheel bar. We lit out over there and rolled, put him in it and started the house with him, you know, rolling. He treated two in the wheel bar and us rolling head to <laughs> That sounds like a pretty good job, Junior. Well, he was up selling tree, both of them together. Did uh, he do anything else that we should know about? Well, yeah. Well, went with him again one time. He got better, though, in about three years. He got a little better every year. Yeah. Right? He he got so he'd done, you know, you tree a lot of them in clay roots. Uh-huh. He got where he could beat them whole and have them scratched out when he got there.
dinner. Uh, what's this I hear about you having a mule at Point Square? Yeah, I had one at Point. Well, I never heard of that before. Well, here the no man didn't believe it either, and I told him come over and I'd show him. He come over and we went a, a bird hunting. We we call them patterns and quail. Generally, just call them birds for they are just birds, you know. I got my mule and we went down there and stopped. I told him they old mule pointed them, stuck that hind leg right straight out and just froze. And I told him, I said, they drove a quail right there. He didn't believe me and he walked on up there and he got up all around him. He walked right in them and he just shook and didn't even get to shoot there. We went on <laughs> over our little piece of footer and I, she stopped again. I told him, I said, this mule's got another tra uh, bunch of trees pointed. Oh, he said, surely not. And I said, yeah, it has too. And he walked up there and he got up and he bang, bang, killed too. I didn't take my gun. I'd done had birds. Well, he thought that the mule knowed where the coveys that I'd hunted so much. And he told me he did. And I told him, no, nah, they wasn't, that wasn't right. And he said, well, let's go over on his place. And I told him, mile and a half up yonder the bridge and two miles back down to get across the river to where you're places at. He kept on mouthing around about it. He said we could just cross the river down there. It wasn't much deep. I told him, no, it would never do. We couldn't get that mule to the river. He asked why, and I told him if we ever got into the river because he loved to fish, we'd never get him away from it. <laughs> Junior, uh, I understand they do a lot of moonshining down in the north of Georgia country, around Cummins, around your part. Have you had a big part in the moonshining down there? Well, I've been messing with it all my life, ever uh -huh. since I was big enough to tow the gal in the surf. Well, uh, I think you, you mentioned one time that you'd been making it since you was about 14. I was 14 before I ever started making any by myself. Mm -hmm. you, you've been in trouble with the law down there over this? Well, yeah. Been in, with them, in trouble with them ever since I started making liquor. They uh, put you in jail for that? Well, they didn't for a long time. I did, wasn't as heavy as I am now. It took them about 15 years before they ever rounded me up the first time. Well, uh... You mean they just couldn't catch you? They couldn't run fast as I could. What's the most you've ever had stashed out at one time? Liquor. Yes. Over a hundred cases. Over a hundred cases? Yeah, six gallons of the case. That's, uh, that's 600 gallons of liquor you had stashed out. Yeah. I'd, you were talking about one place, wasn't you? Well, one time. Well, I was in one place. Well, how about in all the places? Well, I had a little more than another place or two. Have you ever had as much as a thousand gallons stashed out? Yeah, I guess I have. Who taught you how to make moonshine, Jay? Well, I don't know. Actually, back when I learned how to make it, I was real small. Everybody made it. About ten houses are around where Hatcher's got a store now. It's back in the woods. In the winter time, when it's bad, you couldn't get out to, to go to the store. Had to go out of the mail, ride a mule out her head about every three weeks. Seven miles to come in. Everybody made it. That's all there was to do before the PWA come out is make whiskey. Uh -huh. Everybody else made it, and I just got started watching them, going with them to it. First one another. Daddy make with everybody. Junior, did you ever sell any, any whiskey to... Uh... Anybody in political office? Well, they some of mine been drunk by politicians, but I didn't. I didn't sell it to. Them. You didn't sell it to. Them. No. Junior, you ever rode a motorcycle? Yeah, I rode a 
250 Honda. Is that right? You own a Honda then? No, and seat one here at the house. Simmer had one here at the house, and I was about halfway in the notion of riding him. Been aiming to for about a week. I got back down the yard, and he showed me how to handle him, and I lit out up to the top of the hill, went down to Lake Joe Hampton store, and got me a pair of Bermuda shorts, and a loudish Taiwanian shirt I could find, a pair of tennis shoes. You was really dolled up, man. And a little straw hat. But I lost my hat, got on up to Waterworks above the house, Started to turn in. Me and the motorcycle separated about four times right fast. <laughs> Skint my leg, tore all the hide off the head. Broke my big toe, which was about it. Skint me all over. About the time I thought it was all over with, he hit me in the back of the head. Junior, uh, you ever serve in the uh, Army? No. Fort Max, as far as I got. Well, what happened? I don't know. I had blood pouring in my foot and went down there barefooted and the breech leg rolled up to my knees, couldn't wear no shoes. Well, what happened to your foot? Dropped the axe on it, stuck it through it on top. Well, what did he say? I said my nerves was bad. Junior, you ever get in any fights? Yeah, I've been in two or three. Got left for dead up in Dawson County, hit with a cold cola case one time. Well, good Lord, why'd they do that? I got in a... I'd went to dance, me and Fowler boy up there. It was a bad night, they run him off and shot at him, tore up Preacher Jarrett Fowler's car. And Treated me rough, put me in my car and pushed it off. Left me for dead. I saw him woke me up the next morning. Couldn't see how my left eye and the right and went together that evening. What'd you do to get in the fight? I was drinking beer, watching them dance, not a keeping my hands to myself. Sound like that was a pretty good round house. Yeah, well, they, they had some good dances up there. Well, Junior, are you working at being a carpenter now? No, I... My brother called me up and offered me a job the other night. I told him I guess I'd <laughs> lay around and garden a little bit and fish a little in the morning and fish a little in the evening, garden the rest of the time, try to get my health back and get ready when the spring opens up and they start running and get ready for it. Junior, let me ask you this. Uh, in your uh, many adventures down in Cummings, Georgia, did you uh, ever get put in jail for anything? Well, I don't know. I got put in jail for a couple of things. Got, I guess the worstest thing I ever got locked up for wasn't for making liquor. What was it for? Well, I, well I'd started to dance, me and some old boys, and we went by a place, and I was sitting on the edge of the bed blowing French harp. I was trying to learn how to blow one in, and the law come in and got us. And, Locked us all up. What kind of place uh, was that, Junior? They said it's a disorderly house. That's what they said. What they charged us with. It cost me $51. Old lady liked to left me. And while I was up there in jail, I had to stay all night and to wait up the day the next day. Well, uh, what did you do with you while you were there all well, night? It's, they made it pretty rough on me. I made me up a little poem about it while I was in there. How's that little poem go, Junior? I was sitting on the bed, not a doing no harm, when up walked the sheriff and took me by the arm. He took me downtown and rung a little bell, and here come a jailer and showed me to my cell. And I woke up the next morning, and I looked upon the wall, and I saw the chinches and the bed bugs playing a game of ball. The score was six to nothing, the chinches wasn't head. Old Oscar hit a home run, knocked me out of bed. 
Woke up Tuesday morning, fell out of bed, and round come a jailer with my butter and bread. The coffee was tobacco juice, the fish is only scale. That's the way they treat the boys in big city jail. You made that one up while you was in jail. Did you, uh, did you go home the next morning when you got out or what? Yeah, I, I went home, but I wished I'd waited a while about going. Old lady was mad. She was mad. I yeah. wonder why. All right, Sheriff been over there and told her a whole bunch of lies. How long you been married, Junior? 20 years. 20 years. Be 21 years the 12th day of this coming January. Mm hmm How long did you know Grace before you married her? About two years. Mm hmm Did you go with her uh, two years before you married her? Or? No, it took me about a year to ever get up nerve enough to go over there. I feared of her daddy. Oh. He's bigger than I was then. And you weigh 285. Well, I didn't then. I just weighed about 135 pounds. Mm -hmm. Tell me this, uh, Junior. How, how did you, uh, where did you first meet Grace? Where did you first see her? Well, I, I trout, caught minks and muskrats. Oh, yeah. You know, mink hides a good price. Muskrat bring about $2, and they're good to eat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of fun catching them, too. Yeah, and you get But you didn't catch, you didn't catch Grace in a trap. No, I'd ride my bicycle and it, so much mud it got up between the fe wheel and the fender, you oh, know, you it going, wouldn't turn. You, I'd start to my trail. Oh, yeah, you'd go into your traps. And, and you I got had your to bicycle. pass her house and it got so it wouldn't work. And I got down in the branch and was uh, washing the mud out from under it to where I could get it to roll. Yeah. And she passed and I saw her. She pa passed? Passed the road and me down in the branch there. And How was she trapping? She's a foot, uh -huh. and hey. I heard her coming and walking, and I raised up, and I told her that uh, I said hi. Uh huh. What she say? She ain't said nothing. She ain't said nothing. She did, just did she smile? Uh huh. She just kept walking. She just ignored you. Yeah. I went home and told mom. I said I saw the ugliest girl over yonder a while ago I ever <laughs> seen. I believe. <laughs> You told and, your mother you saw the ugliest girl in the world. Yeah, I believed it was. And she went on home and told her folks that she'd, we, after we were married, you know, we found this out, didn't huh. before, though. Said they was, that old sample boy that was down there on the bridge washing bicycles, and the bridge sleigh rolled up to his knees and ice all over the ground. Said he didn't have a liquor sense. He's plumb crazy. <laughs> well, then what happened? What was it? What was a, your next experience with Grace? Well, I, me and my sisters, I had two si sisters, and we come by there walking and going out to where they'd build an airplane field out there at Cold Mountain. We decided we might go out there, and mm -hmm. we passed by there. And she'd got to be good friends with my sister, you know, and mm -hmm. so. Uh, so what did you think? My then? sister asked me, said, do you want to ask Grace to go? And I said, God, I'm afeard to. <laughs> But she said, I'll ask her, she'll go, and of course I made a fool out of myself, I had her, my sister asked her, then I asked right behind her. And well, how come you'd do that when you thought she's the ugliest girl in the world? Well, it had been a long time since then, you know, four or five months, and I, she'd got better looking, oh. looked a little better, you know. Junior, you know how to cook? Yeah, I'm a pretty good cook. You cook most anything? Yeah, and anything but biscuit. I can't cook biscuit. Why, what happens when you try to cook biscuit? This keeps crawling up my arm, wadding up to dough dust, and get plumb up to my elbow. You mean you don't know how to control it? No, I can't keep it in the pan, in the bread tray. Maybe you go at it the wrong way. Well, I must do. Did your wife ever tell you any different? No, I... She make good biscuits, I 
tried to cook some, I'd make flat cake. I learned how to cook them because I made one one time, filled a pan full of flour, I mean dough. Mm -hmm. Just about like I thought would be enough for dinner and supper and put it in a little number eight range wood stove. That thing cooked and when it got done, it'd swell up to the top of the stove and poured out over the rack and puddled up in the bottom. When I took it out, the whole rack come out with the pan where the bread had cooked to the... You mean you had a whole oven full of bread? Yeah, right? I had lots of bread. Junior, I know you. I know that you you uh, fish a whole lot. Uh, you know how to cook a fish pretty good. Yeah, know how to cook fish. How about how about a gar? Well, they they say that a gar is really no good. Well, a gar is pretty good. A carp ain't so good. A carp's no good unless you know how to fix them. They're good if you fix them right way. Oh, is that right? Yeah. You take one, tack him on a board. Grease him good and put him in the stove and bake him. Take oh, about two hours. Mm -hmm. Keep him greased. Let him get good and brown. Take him out and throw the fish away and eat the board. ask you this and you may not even want to answer it I don't know I didn't get much education myself did you go to school uh, how far did you get in school well I went seven or eight years but I didn't get but sixth grade oh you <laughs> you went seven or eight years didn't get sixth grade uh, didn't well, learn too fast oh you didn't learn too fast uh, well I wonder was there any reason reckon no I don't know just didn't learn fast <laughs> didn't learn fast they stopped me before uh, they really got started, I think. Oh, they, <laughs> they stopped you before you got started? How? Um, I mean, who? Expelled me from school. Oh, you got expelled from school? Well, what'd you get, ex how come they expel you? I had about seven or eight mile walk. And yeah. I hit a shore enough cold. Uh-huh, uh-huh. My hands was cold. Yeah. And the teacher was helping me warm them. And yeah. Front will come in, so he <laughs> excelled me and fired her. <laughs> what do you think about these uh, short skirts that the ladies are wearing now? These mini skirts. Have you uh, passed any opinion on them? What do you think of them personally? You said. Well, I don't think it's a good idea. I'll call somebody running out of the road. Yeah. <laughs> of the past, I'm sure that you have, but I'll bet right now that you don't even drink. Am I right or am I wrong? You ain't got none on you, have <laughs> Let me ask you, did, uh, when you were young, of course you're smoking now, did you ever, did you ever dip snuff? Did you ever try that? Was any of your folks? Got a big box here in my pocket now. <laughs> you really? You're kidding me. No, I'm not, neither. So help me, I didn't know his own. Pull me down. Look into that rule pocket. There is his snuff. <laughs> you thought I was, I didn't know you. I So help me. And you, you do dip then. Box a day when I'm at home. <laughs> you don't think it, it hurts your health or nothing? Not like smoking. I just smoke about two pack cigarettes a week when I'm. Um, I give that snuff fit, so. <laughs> Up here, you ain't got no word spit. But in the <laughs> Junior, uh, speaking of the overalls, I'll set this right here because I'm not about to open it, boy. Mm. Uh, but uh, used to, we would wear, we were, felt real proud when we got the high bibs. You know, did you ever wear the low backs, the button, you know? Uh, did you ever wear them? The, the low backs, I think we call them low backs. We call these yeah. the bib, you know, the... That's kind of got on now. Oh, is it? Oh, I yeah. didn't know. Well, I couldn't see around your back here. You're a big man, you see. But <laughs> but we used to wear... Well, there's there's a different kind. What, uh... Am I wrong? The high back and the... Oh, yeah, the high back that come up all the way up yeah. there. And you prefer these? I'd rather have these. Uh-huh. Is there any particular reason if you thought about it, or you just would rather have these? Yeah, there's a couple good reasons, but I'd rather not tell them to <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll button that conversation up as of right now. <laughs> Well, 
Had you ever been on television before? You mean before you went to Nashville? Before you went to Nashville. No, yeah. I, no. Uh, uh, what was your reaction to television? Well, I was bad nervous first two times up there on the first two shows. On the last and the cameramen got tickled. Come at life and like forgot their business. I got tickled too, Salter. Eddie Hill, yeah. he he come from a country too and he yeah. got tickled. Yeah. All got tickled. I don't know if somehow or another wasn't nervous no more. Now you had been on the Ralph Emery radio show as well. Uh, and I understand uh, that you met Tex Ritter there. And in talking with you earlier, you made some mention of Tex Ritter's picture. Did did you get his picture or his autograph picture or something? No, uh, we I didn't get none. We went back over our Friday night to get it, and he's gone out of town. And uh, got over at 1130 and started talking to Ralph Emmer, and the phone come up to ringing. And, uh, Marin Worth called me up and gave me a camera, Kodak. Yeah. Do you uh, like to collect pictures of these artists? Yeah, I, well, they wouldn't none of them believe it. I thought I was still a dreaming all the yeah. time I was up there, and I won't get the picture and bring them home to where I could tell if I was when I got woke up. No, I didn't get in there one of Tex Ritter's. Yeah. Uh, he got out of town. Tex said I favored the Ritter, said I had a good sturdy face. Did anybody ask you for your autograph? Yeah, but I didn't, didn't have no pictures with me. I signed my name on papers up there to Hank William yeah. Jr. birthday party. How'd it make you feel somebody want your autograph? It made me feel silly, actually. They come up and watch me see my first stage business I was in up there. That's all right. How you like the stage? Well, it's, it's all right if they pop their hands loud. Uh, you made me some mention, too, of bodyguards earlier. What's that about? Well, a fella approached me, said he wanted to be my bodyguard. Yeah? I told him didn't have nothing to guard yet. Now, outside of your recent trips to Nashville, have you ever done much traveling? No, I ain't never done no traveling. Went to... Florida one time, a deep sea fishing with a feller I worked for took me down there. Yeah. Fed the fish, but there wasn't no hook on the bait. Back to your trip to Nashville, uh, did you ever imagine at the beginning of this thing that uh, your popularity would be so great that uh, you'd meet all these wonderful country music stars? No, I never, never dreamed. That seemed just like I'd been drunk and dreaming and couldn't get woke up. What are you What are you going to do with the money that you get from all of this now? Well, I I met Dale Reese up at the Black Poodle and I told him that I was aiming to buy me a lot and build me a house yeah. on it with it. After I paid what I owed, later I'd see them girls up part in Nashville. I was going to try to trade for two of them, bring them home. I know the old lady wouldn't let me keep them, but I could make some blame good swaps, fat them down here. <laughs> and keep on keeping on.